What I'm about to show you is a biblically sound way I receive answers from God. This is not one of the enemy's new age imitations of the truth, like how fortune tellers imitate genuine prophets. We already know God wants to answer our questions. And in my case, he often did this at random, whether through a random sermon at church on Sunday, a random Christian post on social media, a random daily Bible verse, or perhaps through a random pattern of events which I discerned his answer from by the power of the Holy Spirit through whom we experience all these things by faith. I've simply found a biblically sound way to immediately seek God's response. After some time of allowing God to answer me in this way, seeing the fruit it's produced, better understanding what the Word says about how willing God is to answer us, knowing His ability to do all things, and better understanding the power of His Word, I can say with great faith that this is a sure way of seeking God's already randomized, though timely, answers He gives us throughout life. As I just stated, in order for the following to work, you must have the Holy Spirit slash God within you, and you must have faith that God will not only answer you, but also help you carry out His answer. To receive the Holy Spirit, you must believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior who was raised from the dead. Believing that Christ is our Lord and Savior who was raised from the dead, is also how we are saved slash assuredly get to heaven. Now for the strategy. I ask God a question, then use a Discord bot in my personal Discord server called BibleBot, made by Kerygma Digital, which generates a random verse from a predetermined pool of random verses, which aren't too hard to understand without surrounding passages. You can invite BibleBot to your own Discord servers using the link in the comments, the link in my description, or by searching BibleBot.xyz and inviting it through their website. BibleBot's random verse generator is not maliciously modified in any way as clarified by its creator Seraphim. BibleBot is open source so you can view what's happening under the hood on their GitHub. The predetermined pool of random verses they use is from dailyverses.net slash random Bible verse. I am not affiliated with Kerygma, BibleBot's creators, or dailyverses.net and its creator Tim, beyond being a fellow brother in Christ, and I'm also not sponsored by them. In fact, Seraphim, the creator of BibleBot, recommended against adding any spiritual value to the random verse generator, though as I stated before, this is a biblically sound method of seeking God using God's Word, and as you'll see in the following demonstration, it's a method that I with great faith believe God wants me to share. Now for the visual demonstration. You can set the bot to generate verses in your preferred Bible translation by entering slash set version abbreviation colon your preferred translation here. For example, my preferred translation is NASB 1995, so I entered slash set version abbreviation colon NASB 1995. I start by asking God a question in prayer while typing it out to easily reference later. I typically make my questions a yes or no question, like in this example asking if he's against my decided action. I then enter slash random to generate a verse slash verses. To be certain I fully understand the verse, I'll sometimes use BibleRef.com or BibleHub.com for verse definitions and context. If the verse I receive is related to the question I'm asking God, then his answer is either along the lines of yes or no. However, if the verse I receive is unrelated to the question I ask God, then I interpret his answer as a no. If I feel my interpretation of God's answer isn't enough for me to trust by faith, then I'll seek confirmation once or more times, as you see in the video where I'm asking God to, in quotation, LMK, let me know if I'm wrong, or let me know if he's against my interpretation of his desire. Close quotation. Repeating this process of asking and checking the verse definition slash context as needed until I can trust by faith that my interpretation of his answer is what he's telling me. Sometimes my understanding of God's answer is clear, so I don't seek any further confirmation. Other times, I'm asking for confirmation five or more times, though this is unfortunately sometimes due to a lack of faith in God's answer. At the end of the day, we aren't perfect, so whether we fail or succeed at interpreting an answer from Him, and fail or succeed in acting by faith because of an answer from Him, we know that He loves us beyond comprehension. We know that we're no longer under the law, but under grace, and we know that He causes all things to work together for good to those who love Him, to those who are called according to His purpose. And at least we made an effort to better understand him with his word, which likely got us closer to his ideal goal for us than we'd have been without his word. As we walk faithfully with him, Jesus, to receive whatever rewards he has for us, in addition to our salvation, which we've received freely for no works, 
and only for believing he's our Lord and Savior, who was raised from the dead. For further proof that this is a reliable method we can use to receive God's answers, I will do a demo asking God a question with an answer every Christian should agree on, and even non-Christian historians agree on. And this question is, are you against me thinking that Christ was not crucified? And so I'm asking God if he's against me thinking that Christ was not crucified. I'm going to do slash random. And the answer I got was Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. All right. And so I'm going to figure out the verse definition and context of this verse, just because we're doing an example. So I'm going to Google Proverbs 17, 17, Bible ref. And the commentary reads, Solomon points out the value of a true friend and a brother. He says, he says a true friend is always loving and a brother helps in trying times. A true friend and genuine brother exhibit true love in unfavorable circumstances as well as in favor favorable ones. Interpreters debate the nuances of this verse. Some suggest Solomon means to make a contrast, a friend, but a brother. This would imply a difference between those who act as friends and those who go even further in their friendship to be considered brothers. Others suggest the correct translation here should be a brother is born of slash from adversity. That would suggest brotherhood is forged through danger or hardship. This does not mean we should rush headlong into any risk as the next verse warns, Proverbs chapter 17, 18 which states, one who lacks sense gives a pledge and puts up security in the presence of his neighbor. Each option orbits the same basic center. That genuine love relates to practical actions. The Apostle John writes, whoever loves his brother abides in the light, and in him there is no cause for stumbling. 1 John 20. In 1 John 3.16 he writes, by this we know love, that Jesus laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. In the following verse, he decrees the action of doing nothing to help a needy brother, and in verse 18 he exhorts, Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth, 1 John 3.18. A true friend or brother draws alongside a hurting person when that person experiences sickness or pain or financial distress or the loss of a loved one. It is easy to say, I am praying for you, but genuinely, genuine love only starts there. James chapter 2, verses 15-16. to 16. So, as you guys can see, I just pulled it up on Bible Ref, read it word for word, and if you guys didn't pick it up, right there, the commentary, the context of this verse implies that God is telling me that Jesus, in brackets, laid down his life for us. So this is basically God saying that he's against me thinking that Christ was not crucified because this ver the very definition of this verse describes that Christ was crucified. So this verse indicates that we should love as a friend at all times following Christ's example who also laid down his life for us according to the commentary on BibleRef.com. This means God is against my thinking here. Now, hopefully this is enough for you guys to believe by faith that this works. Um, if not, try it yourself, obviously. You know, believe that Christ is your Lord and Savior who was raised from the dead, so you have the Holy Spirit. And then try it by faith. And then see see what happens, because I have learned a lot and grown a lot <laughs> and seen a lot of fruit, as I mentioned before. And I know for a fact that God definitely has ministered to me through these means, through his word. And yeah, uh, thanks for watching.